So I'm Rob Pardo. I'm the executive vice president of game design at Blizzard Entertainment, and I'm also the executive producer of Diablo 3. We've been uh, working on the game for quite a few years now because the game was originally being worked on up at uh, Blizzard North. And when we uh, closed the studio and moved the project down to uh, Irvine, uh, we kind of did a big reboot on the project. So I guess um, it's probably been about three years, I think, since then. And as far as why we're announcing now, well, um, it, it was just kind of the right time for the game. You know, the game's really far along and, you know, it's really fun to play already, even though we're not you know, having a playable build here at the show, it's 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 pretty far along and it's already a fun game to play, so we just felt like it's the right time to announce the game. And a great place too. Yeah. Oftentimes with Blizzard games, you know, we uh, we go down a path for like a year, year and a half on a game, and, and then once um, the game actually starts becoming playable and we have the early prototypes, you know, we, we kind of stop and look at the game, you know, and have a lot of other people within the company look at the game and, and really decide, okay, where do we want to go with it? And that process has happened on StarCraft II, it's happened on the first StarCraft, it's happened on WarCraft III, it even happened on WoW, so, so it's really nothing new. It's just um, that was kind of the right time period was when we moved the project down here to really kind of take stock, look at where the game was going and what we really ultimately wanted to achieve with the product. As of today, we have um, obviously both the Barbarian and the Witch Doctor are fully playable. Um, and one of the things that was, you know, I know a small thing to the world of RPGs, but it's still kind of a cool thing in the Diablo universe. You know, now we have gender on each of the classes. So, you know, if you want to play the Witch Doctor, you can do male or female. So we have male and female versions of both those classes. And um, we have. I think uh, most of the other classes are actually playable back in the home office, but I'm not going to tell you about them today. And uh, you know, most of the uh, kind of the first act is also uh, pretty playable, but we have, we still have a long ways to go. You know, mainly on on the content side now. You know, the kind of the the moment to moment gameplay, the classes, the skills. You know, we also have multiplayer up and running, but now it's it's really about generating content. The biggest thing that you can see from watching the demo today. And one of the reasons why we showed the Barbarian because um, we thought it would be great for people to be able to kind of see a demo of a class that they have kind of played with before and see how, how not only has that class evolved, but how has the game evolved since Diablo 2. And one of the things that we're really trying to bring with the game is making a much more immersive, visceral experience. And that's something that uh, we really wanted to bring with this game. And, you know, we kind of, you know, played a lot of God of War, games like that, and, and while totally different genres and different types of games, but we, we really felt like uh, we could bring a lot of kind of what's cool about a game like that into the Diablo universe. And I think that's ultimately what you see with the Barbarian, is, you know, he obviously is going to have a lot of new skills, he's going to have some skills that come over, but even the ones that uh, you might be familiar with, you're not going to be familiar with you know, just how cool they are and, you know, the different sort of death animations and, the, you know, the physics in the game and it's, it's just, you know, such a cooler, more immersive, visceral experience than I think you've seen before. There's definitely a lot of cool stuff that we're going to be announcing more in the loot system and the armor system in the future, but the, the biggest thing I would say is uh, we know where our bread's buttered on this license <laughs> and we totally understand that you know, people really want to get the cool items. They want to get the cool armor sets. They want to be able to collect cool loot, make the character look cool, be able to trade with, with other players online. So we're going to deliver on all that. With uh, World of Warcraft, you know, we, we have all the different, uh, you know, realms. With smaller communities of players, with uh, Diablo 3, we're not going to kind of relegate people off into those those realm concepts like we did. It's going to be much more global. You know, with any sort of within any uh, you know Earth region, you know, like uh, North America, you be able to play with any player there. You know, you don't have to find out what realm they're on and, and then transfer your character or anything like that. So I think. Uh, the biggest problem you see in, uh, in WoW, as it pertains to things like matchmaking, is, is just kind of player populations. You know, because everyone is kind of segregated off onto like one realm of like two or three hundred different realms for whatever region you're in. So just imagine if all those players were in one place and you can match against any of them. So 
that's probably the, the biggest thing that we've learned from WoW and, and we kind of already learned this lesson with Warcraft 3 which I think has a great matchmaking system so I think War 3 is a better example of what you might expect with uh, Diablo 3 than WoW would be. You know if you look at Diablo 1 and 2 they're very um, I mean they obviously had the, the gothic look to it but you know we weren't really weren't uh, they weren't very colorful games and and one of the challenges we want to take with Diablo 3 was could we add color but still maintain that, that gothic dark feel. You know, because I, I think uh, we want to take more of a dark as an emotion rather than actual color or art choice. And I think that's something that, um, you know, it took a long time to get to the point where we're at now. Like we've probably gone through at least three different pretty major art direction shifts until we got to the point where we're on stage. Because I think it's really difficult to be able to pull that off. But we're really happy with the look of the game now. You know, each game we make, and especially when we, we do sequels, we really kind of sit down and decide what is it that we want to accomplish this game. And with this particular game, um, we want it to be a true sequel, so we want it to be very familiar. Um, so, and some of the things we really wanted to bring over was, you know, we want to have a great loot system, we want to have um, real action-based gameplay, we wanted to have, um, you know, all the cool monsters, the cool, you know, kind of hell vibe. But there's so many new things we can do too. You know, we really want to have much more interesting scenarios. We want to have a much more visceral feel to the game, and we want to have a. Um, and this is another challenging part of it: is we want to have a, a more immersive, interesting story experience, without taking away from the action-packed feel of the first couple of Diablos. And I think um, that's another challenge we've really been taking on: is um, trying to make it feel more like um, a more um, kind of traditional RPG, but without taking away from the action elements. We've been sitting here talking about Diablo 3, which uh, is a game we just announced today at the Worldwide Invitational. And since we're Blizzard, you know, we're going to go ahead and announce the release date of uh, it'll ship when it's ready.